Hi, my name is Ben and welcome again to the Canyon Country Discovery Center. We're here again in our exhibit hall to check out one of our favorite exhibits. But as you guys know, we never go straight to the exhibit. We're going to talk about a bit of science first. And the science we're going to talk about today is something we've already been exploring a little bit. It's light. Light, as we've discussed, discussed before, travels in waves, in wave pattern. And we interpret this to these different frequencies of light in different colors. The lower frequencies turn out to be more of a red color, while the higher frequency light turns into more of a bluish color. And we can see this, and we see all of this, and we interpret it with our eyes. So let's talk just a little bit about our eyes and how it is that they can see and interpret these images. So the very first structure that light interacts with as it enters our eyes is actually a lens. Much like the lens in my glasses, or in a telescope, or a microscope, we use lenses all the time, and they have a very similar function, and that is to focus light that's entering it, and focus it into a specific point. Particularly our lens is taking the light around us and focusing it back further into our eyes, where we have more structures there that will help interpret what exactly that light means and what it is. The structures we'll talk about today are rods and cones. Let's start with the cones. We have three types of cones in our eyes. We have one type of cones that interpret our lower frequency light. In other words, our reds and the similar colors. The next type of cones deals with more of our yellows and the middle range of frequency of colors. And the final one, as you may have guessed, deals with more of our higher frequency, our blues, and so on and so forth. There's a reason our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Um, that's also what our eyes interpret. Those are those kind of those primary colors. Um, those, co those cones, once again, are focused in the middle of our eye, which is really interesting because the, the other structure, our rods, are kind of all around our eye. And the rods have, slightly different, have a slightly different purpose. Instead of focusing on color, they try and focus on dim versus bright. And so they take the amount of light that you're seeing and help you interpret that. And you'll, they become very important at night. So as, it, as light gets dimmer towards dusk, you'll notice that a lot of your colors start to become more muted. If you turn off the lights, you, it's really hard to see color. And the reason why is because your rods are what are helping you see that light, but they do not interpret the color. They have that separate, uh, separate purpose. That's why you can kind of see things that are dim, but yet at the same time, you just don't see the colors at the same rate, the same way. So if a room is dim, you see not the color so well, but you can still see somewhat. Now, the information gathered by the rods and the cones is sent back through your optical nerve into your brain. And then your brain takes the two images, one from your left eye, one from your right eye, and combines it into one image, which is, if you can take a moment, that is amazing that your brain can do that. Take all that information constantly and construct one single image from it. Speaking of constructing images, Let's look at our light light over here. So our light light is basically a large scale version of what you are seeing right now on your computer and phone screens. Our computer and phone screens use what's called pixels to display color. Now those pixels are essentially boxes of one color, but they're very, very, very small and when combined with a lot of other red pixels, the same size and all over the place, they can create a complex image. Now, I don't have time to make an image here in this, in this video, but you can do much the same thing here with our light bright. Combining these different colors and different patterns, you can make an image, a large scale image, so to say that's very similar in nature to what you, your phones and your computers.
computers do, do as well. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you guys next time. We are so excited to see what 